Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Travis Reinking, who is also known as the Waffle House shooter? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case. I'll move to the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. Travis Reinking was born in 1982 and grew up in Morton, Illinois. At some point, he developed mental health symptoms, including delusions and bizarre behavior. On May 26, 2016, Travis and his parents were in a drugstore parking lot when his parents called the police. Travis was experiencing delusions. Specifically, he thought that Taylor Swift was his girlfriend and was out to harm him. The police indicated that Travis was hostile toward them. He had no respect for their authority. They were also concerned because Travis had access to a number of firearms at his residence. On June 16, 2017, Travis was involved in another incident, this time at his father's crane rental business in Tremont, Illinois. Travis lived in an apartment above the business. One of the employees called the police after seeing Travis come down the stairs from his apartment wearing a pink women's house coat and carrying a rifle. He yelled at the employee saying, is this what you blank want? Travis put the rifle in his vehicle and drove away from the business. Later that same day, Travis visited a public pool. The director of the pool called the police. Travis was still wearing that pink house coat. He had opened it to reveal certain anatomical features to the lifeguards. Travis kept yelling that he was a man. I guess opening the house coat was his way of proving his claim. No charges were filed in connection with this incident. The next month, July 2017, Travis traveled to the White House in Washington, D.C. He crossed a barrier and refused to leave it when ordered to do so. The Secret Service arrested Travis. Travis told the Secret Service he wanted to set up a meeting with the president. He was a sovereign citizen, which gave him the right to inspect the grounds. Travis was charged with unlawful entry, and that same month accepted a deferred prosecution agreement. He had to serve 32 hours of community service and could not come back to the White House. The case was dismissed in November 2017, after Travis completed the requirements of the agreement. The authorities in Illinois seized Travis's firearms on August 24, 2017, three rifles and one pistol. The police allowed Travis's father to keep the firearms after his father requested to do so. This was under the condition that the guns would be kept away from Travis. His father agreed to those terms, yet in November of 2017, he returned the firearms to Travis. His father would later be charged with unlawful delivery of a firearm. Around the time the case related to the White House was dismissed, Travis moved to the Nashville, Tennessee area. He found a job as a construction worker in January of 2018, but on April 3 of that same year, he was fired. He had accused a variety of people of being out to get him. On April 18, Travis made his way to an automobile dealership in Brentwood, Tennessee, and stole a BMW X6 SUV. On April 22, 2018, at about 3.21 a.m., Travis drove his pickup to a Waffle House restaurant in Antioch, which is southeast of downtown Nashville. Travis was wearing a green jacket. He had no other clothing on his body. After sitting in his truck for about four minutes, he exited holding a Bushmaster XM-15 rifle. He then shot two people who were outside the restaurant. He entered the restaurant and continued to fire. He killed a third person and mortally wounded a fourth. Four people were wounded, two by gunfire and two from flying glass. One of the injured was a 29-year-old electrical technician named James Shaw Jr. A bullet had grazed his elbow as he ran into the bathroom when the shooting started. James realized that there was no way to escape the bathroom. When he noticed that Travis pointed the rifle down in order to reload, James charged at Travis. He managed to grab the rifle, burning his hands in the process. James pulled the rifle away from Travis and threw it over the counter. 
Travis left his truck behind and fled the scene on foot. The police started vigorously searching for him. A construction worker notified the police after seeing Travis enter the woods. The police arrested Travis. This was 34 hours after the shooting. Travis was carrying a semi-automatic pistol inside of a backpack. Travis was charged with a number of crimes, including murder and attempted murder. In August of 2018, he was found incompetent to stand trial. He was committed to a mental health facility. Mental health clinicians said that Travis had severe schizophrenia. In October of that same year, he was found competent to stand trial. The trial started in January of 2022. Travis had initially pled not guilty, but he changed his plea to not guilty by reason of insanity. On February 4, Travis was found guilty on all counts, including four counts of first-degree premeditated murder. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Now moving to my analysis. As I mentioned, Travis was diagnosed with schizophrenia. Clinicians believed his presentation was severe. Travis had delusions, auditory hallucinations, and paranoia. One delusion was about Taylor Swift. This is the delusion that he had in that drugstore parking lot when his parents called the police. Travis believed that Taylor Swift was his girlfriend. In addition, he believed that she was stealing his thoughts, stalking him, had gained access to his cell phone and his Netflix account, and had broken into his house and assaulted him. Travis moved several times in order to escape what he believed was persecution. By the time he moved to the Nashville area, he was completely divorced from reality. Travis believed that he was communicating directly with God. He was always under surveillance. Other people, in addition to Taylor Swift, were able to read his thoughts. As he would walk by people, he heard them repeating phrases that they could have only known about if they were reading his private thoughts or his private journals. Eight months before the attack, Travis actually approached a police officer to make a report. He had a few items he wanted to complain about. He said that about 20 to 30 people were accessing his phone and his computer. He did not know who they were, but he knew they were doing it because he could hear himself through their speakers when he was in an online chat room. Travis said that when he was at Walmart, he saw a man in a black shirt with an earpiece watching him. The man was only focused on him, not watching anyone else. He claimed this all started after he wrote a message to Taylor Swift. Travis believed that people were trying to trick him into breaking the law, and he thought people were outside his house barking like dogs. Travis's attorney suggested that at the time of the murders, Travis believed that people at the restaurant were government agents. He believed that God commanded him to kill those people. This takes me to the question, was Travis actually not guilty by reason of insanity? There's no question he carried out the shooting, but did a mental illness make him unable to appreciate the wrongness of his actions? I'll start by looking at the factors that make him look not guilty, then move to the factors that make him look guilty. On the not guilty side, Travis had a long and well-documented history of mental illness. This wasn't just something that he said at the last minute. It appeared as though his symptoms were getting worse. There's really no reason to question that he was psychotic. He had both hallucinations and delusions. The way that Travis described his concerns was in line with psychosis. He was quite believable in this regard. Here are a few examples of behaviors that Travis demonstrated, which are highly consistent with schizophrenia symptoms. Number one, his references to Taylor Swift are consistent with an erotomanic delusion. This is where a person thinks that a celebrity is in love with them when that is not the case. John Hinckley Jr., the man who shot Ronald Reagan, believed that Jodie Foster was in love with him. Interestingly, he became attracted to her after watching the movie Taxi Driver. The main character in that movie, played by Robert De Niro, was named Travis Bickle. Just a strange coincidence. Number two, Travis was paranoid. He thought that people were trying to persecute him. He believed this was a conspiracy. Number three, Travis thought that people had the ability to intrude into his thoughts and steal them. This sense of mind reading is common with psychosis. Number four, 
Travis maintained a clothing optional attitude while being aggressive. The desire to remove one's clothing in an inappropriate context is consistent with psychosis, although usually it's considered more common when that psychosis occurs in the context of mania. Number five, Travis said that he received messages from God. Auditory hallucinations can be very frightening and exceptionally convincing. People with these hallucinations literally hear voices that other people cannot hear. In addition to being paranoid, many people who have delusions are grandiose. Therefore, it's easy for them to assume those voices are coming from God. They may feel honored to follow the commands as well as frightened not to follow them. Now moving to the evidence that made Travis Reinking look guilty. Travis seemed like he was pretty organized. He selected a time when the Waffle House was busy, after 3 in the morning on a Sunday. When he was captured in the woods, he was able to understand and comply with police commands. The prosecution also brought up a few other points, but I'm not sure these really point to him being guilty more than not guilty. For example, the prosecutor said that Travis selected his most powerful firearm for the attack. I think this is consistent with both not guilty and guilty. If he believed God was telling him to kill people, then it makes sense he would select the most powerful firearm. If he wanted to kill them intentionally, like it wasn't related to mental illness, he would still select his most powerful firearm. When considering all the evidence, do I think that Travis was not guilty by reason of insanity? Yes, it seems fairly clear that a mental illness caused his violent behavior. If Travis could not successfully use this defense, then this defense is useless. I think the topic is somewhat academic. Whether Travis is guilty or not guilty by reason of insanity, he can never be released from custody. The irony of this case is that it probably doesn't matter to Travis whether he is in a correctional facility or not, as he is already trapped in a prison in his own mind. Those are my thoughts on the case of Travis Reinking. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis on this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.